Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem time needed to inform all employees. So we're given N, which tells us how many employees we have. So for the second example, we're given six, which tells us we have six employees and each employee will actually have a manager. The good thing is that the employees are numbered from zero to N minus one, which in this case is gonna be five. So you can see zero, one, two, three, four, five. And this manager's array is important because as you can tell, what we actually have is a graph. And what manager's array tells us is for each node, so in the first position, meaning the zeroth node, its manager, is node two. Actually, it looks like everybody in this array has a manager of two except for two itself. And that's not a coincidence. We're actually given another parameter head ID, which tells us that there's always going to be a node like this one that does not have a manager. It's kind of like the CEO, I guess. Nobody's like above this person. So that's what the negative one indicates. But again, you don't have to like actually find the negative one in the managers array because they actually just give it to you. And the problem is, how long is it going to take us starting from the head to basically traverse the entire graph? In this case, it's a very simple tree, but this graph could definitely be more complicated. It could have some more nodes like this, and you know, this could have some children as well. But the good thing is it's always going to be a tree structure. So that tells us that there's not going to be any cycles, no cycles at all and that the graph is going to be connected. So for sure, if we start at the head, we will be able to reach all of the nodes. In that case, you might think, well, then do we just want to take like the height of the tree? Cause that would be pretty simple. It tells us like to complete this entire layer, it takes one and then to complete like another layer, it takes one. No, it's not quite that simple. We're given another parameter, the last parameter, which is inform time. It basically tells us that from a node like this one, the time it's gonna take to inform all of its children. So in this case, you can see that it's just one unit of time. Again, this is a pretty simplified example. Imagine if we had a tree that was bigger. So like from here, starting at the root, it takes us maybe one unit of time to inform all of the children or rather visit all the children. You can think about it however you want. But then perhaps from this node over here, it takes us two units of time to inform its children. Okay, that's fine. So pretty much if this part of the tree did not exist, we would say one plus two is the total amount of time it takes us to inform all of the nodes. But there's kind of a conflict here. What happens if for this node to inform its children, it takes three units of time? So my question is, what is the total? Like how much time did it take us to inform all of the nodes or visit all of the nodes in this tree? Well, in this case, you can probably just think about it like one plus the maximum of these two, if you wanna think of it like a recursive problem. And that's definitely a valid way. So in this case, the answer would be one plus three because three is obviously larger than two. That works, but I think another way to do it is also a breadth first search way, the way I'm kind of depicting this in the drawing, going layer by layer, we can actually store that information along with every single node when we do the breadth first search. And as you might remember, breadth first search is done with a queue data structure. Every node in the layer is added to the queue and then we pop them from left to right. So basically what I'm saying is we solve the problem like this. We say it takes zero time to visit the head node because that's pretty much our starting point. And then we say it takes one unit of time to visit these nodes and we store that information along with the node when we push this to the queue. And then from here, when we visit its children, we say that the time it took to visit this guy, because remember for this guy to visit all of its neighbors is gonna be two. So we don't store two with the node because actually we want the total amount of time. So we actually put two plus one where the one comes from this previous node right here. So we actually store a three here and a three here. It took three units of time to visit these nodes. And similarly over here, if it takes three units of time for this guy to visit its neighbors, then we put three plus one in each of these spots. So we end up with a four in each of these spots. And as you can imagine, the tree might not be symmetrical. Maybe this guy has one more child over here and the time it takes to visit the node is five units of time. Then perhaps, here we put three plus five, which ends up with an eight. So 
now it's kind of becoming obvious what value we would return. Among all of these nodes, we just want to return whichever node has the maximum amount of time it took to reach that node. And that will be pretty easy for us to track with a BFS solution because it's non-recursive. So that's going to be the value that we end up returning. And since we are just basically doing a standard breadth for search, the overall time complexity is just going to be big O of N plus E. I think actually in this case, there's just going to be a single edge for every single single node because that's kind of defined by the manager's array. So actually the big O time complexity is just going to be N where in my case, N is actually the number of nodes, which actually that matches this array as well. And that's also going to be the space complexity because we are going to use a Q. Now, one quick thing I think I didn't mention is when we're actually building this graph, notice how if zero has a manager of two, we don't say that zero points to two. We don't want the edge going in this direction. Remember, a tree is directed. So like any of these edges can't go both ways. So we have to decide which direction is this edge going to go. And as you can tell from this visual that from the root, we want to visit the children. So from the manager, we want to map it to all of its employees. So just because zero has a manager of two doesn't mean we're mapping zero to two. We're actually doing it in the reverse direction. We're going to map the manager to all of its children. So it's going to go in the other direction. Just wanted to clarify that. Now let's code it up. Okay, so coding it up, the first thing we want to do is actually build our adjacency list because we are going to traverse this directed graph. And remember, we're going to be mapping a node or rather a manager to all of its employees. So I'm gonna create a hash map where the default value is going to be an empty list. So remember mapping a manager to list of employees. And then to build the adjacency list, it's pretty simple. I'm just going to iterate over N because remember the length of employees or the length of manager is going to be the same as N anyway. And then what we want to do is not map the employee ID to the manager. This is not what we want to do. We want to do the opposite, remember? So I'm actually going to reverse this. I'm going to use this as the key in our hash map and then use I as the value. We're wrapping the manager to the employee. That's easy enough. Now it's time to actually implement our breadth first search. And this time it's actually going to be a little easier than you think because this is not just a generic graph. This is a tree. So we actually don't need a hash set to keep track of which nodes that we visited because there's not going to be any cycles in this graph. It's a directed acyclical graph. We just need to have a queue like this. And the initial value of our queue is going to be the head. You can't just pass in a single parameter like this. You actually have to pass in a list. So I'm going to pass in a list with the head ID, which is given as a parameter. And remember, along with the node ID, we also want to keep track of a second value, which is the time it took us to reach this value. So to make it clear, I'm going to say this queue is going to be containing pairs where we have an ID and we have the time. If I want that to be the case, this list needs to be a list of tuples. So basically, it takes this list and converts it to a queue. Now we can go ahead and get started with our BFS, but I'll just tell you right now, we are going to be keeping track of the result, which is going to be the time it basically takes to inform everybody. So we'll initialize it with zero and out here. Here, we're going to return it and now just need to implement this BFS portion. Every time we iterate and our queue is non empty, we want to pop from that queue. So I'm going to say queue.pop left because we're going to be appending to the right. When we pop, we can unpack the two values that we pop, which is going to be the ID and the time. And I guess I'm just going to call it I for short. And now before we start going through all the neighbors of this, which we would do like this for every employee of this manager, and we can use the manager ID as the key in our adjacency list, because remember, that's what we kind of built in the first place. This is a employee that could have some other employees. But before we even do that, we want to maximize the result every time we pop from the queue. So we can say result is equal to the max of itself and the time it took to inform this employee, which of course initially is zero. But when we actually append the employees now, we're going to need to update that time. So for this employee, we do not need to add them to any visit hash set. So we don't even need to check if they haven't been visited. All we need to do is append them 
to the queue and I'm going to be appending a tuple where we append the employee ID. And the second thing we append is the time it took to reach this employee. So it's going to, of course, be the time it took to reach the manager, which is this time, plus the time it takes this manager to inform their employees. And that's stored in the inform time array. So here we say inform time using this manager as our ID and we take that time and add it with the time it took to reach this employee. That's pretty much it. Like I said, this is shorter than a standard BFS because we're doing it on a tree, not a generic graph. And now I'll run it to make sure that it works. And as you can see, yes, it does. And it's pretty efficient. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. It has a ton of free resources to help you prepare. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.